with that, let's bring Steve Quayle on. Steve Quayle from stevequayle.com. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, Doug. Good evening. And by the way, I want to thank, too, and just uh, thank you so much and thank everyone for praying for my wife. She's on the road to recovery. Her eyes are taking a while. Like, you know, her corneas were torn and, and they're, they're repairing, but, you know, she can walk. And if she's, uh, uh, when we took her to Billings for a follow up, and basically the, the doctor reiterated to her to stay off her feet. Now, that's like telling a bird not to fly. But anyway, she doesn't want to go through that again, I can assure you. But I want to, I want to tell everyone, ladies and gentlemen, it really does make a difference. I believe when I pray for everyone in Radio Land, or ask you to pray for me and vice versa. I, I, I believe that God enabled us to make contact with him by beseeching him and praying for one another. The scripture says we ought to basically pray for one another's burdens, not basically pray and curse each other. And, you know, Doug, today on the, on my email, I can't believe how many people who are believers are saying the same line over to me and o- over and over again. Now, obviously, they're listening to us, but people are having dreams, and they're saying, even men and women of God, they're saying they've never experienced the warfare that they're experiencing now. And I think that's problematic, and it's also prophesied because, you know, the the Bible is very clear and specific that these end times are going to be a day of wine and roses. And if we go back to the Illuminati and we go back to the globalists, and obviously Satan is going to have his day on earth, and all the kingdoms of the world are going to give their power unto the beast. And so now we've got a a beast. We're going to talk about AI tonight. I want to share with everybody probably one of the most important, I'd say in the top five stories I've ever posted on my website. This is not flattery. It is that important. It's the one I posted by Celeste B. It says, I am wild AI. Hear me roar. Again, I am wild AI. Hear me roar. You can go into my uh, uh, archives and just scroll and put in AI, and you'll find it. But I want to I want to read what some of the things she's talked about because Doug, I believe, and and this is why Branson and the conference of Branson is so critical, especially for people all over the world that will be able to live stream, order the videos, etc. The people that are being brought there have pretty well stood out as voices against and as even voices for. For instance, Hugo de Garris, in his book, The Artilac War, he's the one that uh, that coined the term Artilac, artificial intellect. And the whole idea of artificial intelligence, and by the way, I don't believe there is such a thing. I believe there is possessed sentient intelligence, or what would be called the ghost in the machine. And that basically means when the design parameters of a given, if you will, program or something, it's kind of like the equivalent of unintended consequences. By the way, that term was, you know, coined almost 50 years ago. But the problem now that we're dealing with, we're dealing with a word that's cloaked in mystery that most people don't understand. When you talk about the number of the beast, and you talk about 666, and you talk about Revelation chapter 13, and you talk about the time we're living in right now where everything has to be categorized, I'm sorry, cataloged, and every word, every thought, they're not happy with they, meaning the Luciferians, are not happy with just having a little bit of information. When they say total information awareness, they mean it. So I'm going to read some excerpts from this because, again, I posted it on my website, and uh, I know uh, the, the young woman that wrote this, God bless her, one of, and, and those of you who are blessed by Sue Bradley, I can say this, without any flattery, the Bible tells me to give credit to whom credit is due, honor whom honor is due. This is probably some of the most astute and succinct writing that I've ever heard, and really explain to people what's at stake. And basically, here it's simple, Doug. It's the end of everything we've ever known. It's the end of anything related to the living God. Now, I want to make it clear at the beginning, they ain't going to succeed. And I understand ain't isn't the way I should say it, but this isn't a time for being proper. This is a time for basically getting it out there and doing what needs to be done. So here's what it says. And and I'm going to read excerpts because it's this important. You know, she writes, There is an aura of mystery when society and the military catapulting at a tremendous speed towards a technology where the professionals wonder, can our civilization survive? 
Now let's get scared about artificial intelligence. Well, I would say this. It's my contention that, and I, I, I wish that the cosmology and the cosmogony, two words, different words, but kind of relating to the same thing, I, I, I pray that, that God's going to wake up his people. Now, he will, and how he does it, I don't know. And as I've said before, I'm not giving suggestions. All I'm trying to say is that God needs to awaken his People and those people who are what I would call morally inclined to do the right thing, whether they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or not, because if they are morally inclined to do the right thing, the people that hate morality and the right thing will want their lives too. So AI, artificial intelligence, but I, I shortened it, okay? Yeah, I just call it Antichrist Intel. Antichrist Intel is basically, as some have said, is going to, even Stephen Hawking, who went to his great cosmic reward, and I don't think it was heavenly, Hawking said that the full development of artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Elon Musk described artificial intelligence as our biggest existential threat, and said that playing around with AI was like summoning the demon. Now, I want people to pay attention when the globalists and the elitists and the billionaires start using words like this. There's a reason they choose the words they do. And I would say to everybody that's in DARPA, everybody that's in Defense Intelligence Agency, the CIA, the NSA, the NRO, and every three- and four-letter acronym government agency, you have been compartmentalized, the majority of you, unless you're majestic or magic clearance, to basically function in a very, how should I say this, limited uh, universe in which you're told to do what you do for the greater good. Well, Doug, I maintain that right now, the very extinction of the human race, and you know, listen, if I'm five years off, well, that's known to God, but warning people about this stuff is, somebody said, well, why should I care about AI? I can't pay my mortgage. And I said, well, here's why you should worry about it, because it's the AI logarithms and algorithms that are basically deciding who lives and who dies. And I think it's a tragic, tragic uh, uh, indictment against the pulpits and the preachers when they're not preaching the full counsel of God. Because, look, we know in the... Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified when we post new videos. Times and people say, ah, oh, that happened 70 AD. You know, no, it didn't happen. They didn't have a, an ability to basically uh, have two men of God, and I personally believe the two witnesses, okay, are. Elijah and Enoch, the only two men that have never died, uh, Moses died, obviously the angel had to bury him. And I want to share with people that the reason why we're seeing so much emphasis on bones and on DNA and on um, genetic engineering and CRISPR technology and all this is because it's one word that most people can't even embrace, and that's replacement, and replacement and destruction of the human race. So, in essence, we're going to be dealing with so much um, stuff coming our way that there's no way in the natural. I'll make this clear. Doesn't matter how tough you are. Does not matter how smart you are. Doesn't matter how clever you are. Doesn't matter anything. What matters is this stuff cannot be fought in the strength of anything but the power of the Lord. The Bible says, be strong in the power of the Lord and in his might. So we're dealing with, you know, just a few terms. We're dealing with robotics, cyber electromagnetic disruption, unmanned autonomous ground air vehicles, surf, subsurface sea systems, nano weapons, and everything I can put on. There's probably a hundred different words in this thing that it's all designed for one word, and that's the K word, kill. Kill. And so when you hear the use of uh, Internet of Things and sensors to harness the flow of information, you've got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that's TC. Forget politically correct. That's total control. At the end of the day, you know, people have asked this, well, what? when's enough money enough? And I've, I've shared with you, one of the guys who's dead now, former spook, made the statement. He said, Steve, it's never about enough money. He said, even those who are rich want one thing. They want bragging rights and they want more power than the other guy.
guy. And Doug, we're seeing that right now in the whole world. And the world is basically going on. And I think what what most uh, American Christians don't understand, a whole lot of biblical prophecy can take place in the future with America not on the scene. Because we've been granted, in my opinion, a short period of repentance. And judging by what I'm seeing, people say to me, I know this, when a Christian says, or a professing or a confessing, there's a difference. But I claim it to Christianity, he says, well, we don't have anything to repent of. He's already uh, deceived. And so tonight, you know, the thing I want to talk about is the fact that you're seeing the war on truth. You and I discussed it earlier on the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a full-scale attack. And thank you for those of you who are standing with Doug and I, the legal things, the legal fees, and standing with us prayerfully, standing with Hagman and Hagman. But, Doug, you know, when you've got autonomous, basically, software writing algorithms and judging by the topics we speak of and the people we interview, you interview, I interview, the things I say, every single word uh, being recorded, and all of that, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is being done through every single phone call, every single fax, every single, uh, any place you're on an electric, and by the way, in a big city, they're listening to you, they're listening to you, and they can monitor a single speech from outer space, they can modulate you, they can put into autonomous killing vehicles, and I think this is something that we've got to talk about tonight, because if you remember years ago, Doug, there was an attempt to identify uh, gun owners and putting red or green or blue dots on their homes and their mailboxes. And this was in areas that didn't have rural uh, newspaper delivery, which is one of the... Yeah. Yeah. And, and you mentioned, you brought this up. I, I don't mean to interrupt here, but 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 you know, you, you, you are being proven correct time and time and time again. You know, I just want to say that for for people who who are doubters in this, maybe you're a little. Uh, we 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 collectively don't have our timing right, but but certainly you're at, you've been ahead of the game ever since day one. Well, so, thank and, you. and I believe it's yeah, I believe that when you're ahead of the game, it's only so that God can give the people that should be paying attention that last uh, opportunity to, to repent. And I'm serious. We repent by saying, God, I'm tired of my old life. Look, I'm a sinner. Most of us who have lived wild lives or crazy lives, and even as Christians backslidden, you know, the thing I don't think people recognize is what the battlefront looks like. It's okay to sit in another country and send you and I wacky emails or post articles and, you know, have, have the uh, uh, Gorgon sisters posting all over the Internet or, you know, the handmaidens of Medusa, the thing is, is that, and others, the thing is, is that at, at some point, truth is going to prevail. And this is my concern. When I wrote Genetic Armageddon, it was about today's technology, tomorrow's monsters. When I replaced it with xenogenesis, that means simply a third, uh, a third pair of DNA instead of a double helix, a triple helix, and the, the destruction of God's human creation to be replaced, and we could call them the replacement, by the devil and, and the supernatural, uh, yeah, what would I say, manipulation of DNA to literally breed us out of existence. Now again, you know, 15 years ago, people just shook their head. Now, every day, every headline is changing. And by the way, I've had to add an extra chapter to my book just on on the basic headlines of today, and I guess I have to, uh, you know, just put at the last chapter, to be continued. And guess what? The people who will read the book, and I'm talking about Terminated, you know, my my book that's coming out, so I'm going to be about a week delayed because I just had to add another chapter. So much is breaking, breaking, Doug, that at the speed of, I would say this, beyond the speed of light, because Jesus said, that even the days are going to be shortened for the elect's sake. And if you look to anybody, I mean, just think back, everybody, two years ago. Think about what you were doing two years ago, and then think what you were doing about two months ago. And at some point when you hear people make the statement, it's all blending together, they're starting to understand the mystery of time. And the mystery of time, and only God can reveal it, but there is a point there 
where time as we know it, as uh, you know, as we're taught it, on a linear time and space, where that gets interfered with by another dimension. So we've got trans-dimensional creatures and entities coming into our dimension that God, in his mercy, kept out of our dimension in order that we might basically be in Eden versus a living hell. And so it's interesting, isn't it? The scripture says that the foundations be destroyed. What can the righteous do? And one of the biggest frustrations... Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified when we post new videos. that you've expressed, I've expressed, and others we've talked to has expressed, the foundations are destroyed, and everybody's still trying to argue about what's being erected on a destroyed foundation. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, that was a great analogy. What's being erected on a, on a destroyed foundation? Thank you for that. that. That's a great picture, word picture. Precisely. Well, again, it helps. Joe, did you want to say something? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no. I mean, just the, everything you said from the, you know, the the Internet of Things, this whole system that is being laid out on top of the censorship, the, it, it's a spiritual battle, a 100%, and I think we need to, you know, focus on that aspect of it more so uh, than anything else in our own personal lives, and, and it's just so important that we recognize the battle that we're in. Well, we're seeing right now in all dimensions, you know, and I think I would like to explain again, Dane Wigington has done the world a great favor, geoengineeringawatch.org. God bless you, Dane. Because what you're seeing, you're not seeing the result of bovine flatulence. You're not seeing the carbon footprint. What you're seeing is what I would call a reverberation of electromagnetic warfare when everybody's using the ionosphere, basically, as a deflection point for their weapon that all this weather war is going on. Now we're seeing, again, some of the most extreme weather. You're seeing jellyfish in the sky. You're seeing, you know, in the uh, jellyfish. By the way, I coined the term jellyfishianity uh, simply because that means most people who have ever been a diver, scuba diver, even a snorkeler, you run into jellyfish and they just kind of float with the current and they have all these tentacles and the things that run into the tentacles determine, you know, what they feed on. They just grow. And if you've ever seen a Portuguese man of war, some of these things get really, really huge. Now, I'm not digressing. I'm talking about a jellyfish has no spine. It goes with the flow. God never meant for us to go with the flow, but to stand against it. Moses had to lift up his rod of deliverance, and he had to put his foot in the water, and basically when he obeyed God, God did the impossible as Moses did the possible. So, listen, this is something so critical. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to, I, I encourage you all to read this and reread it. The name of it is, I Am Wild AI, Hear Me Roar. And in the Celeste writes a, a pretty powerful statement, okay? And, uh, you know, after she goes through everything of self-organizing, autonomous, aerial ground, maritime, subsurface, even subterranean unmanned earth changes, uh, Famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places, wars, rumors of wars, deception, persecution, and murder. She said, overwhelmed? Oh, not yet. Artificial intelligence. Here's the point for tonight. If you want to know, this would be called the money paragraph. In photography, when you get a shot, by the way, very special thanks to Steve Walker. He's been on a tour across America. The guy is a gifted and talented man. He's the one supplying me the photographs for uh, the photo of the day on my website. But the fact is, is that all of the imagery that we're seeing now is being chosen for us. And here's what she writes. Artificial intelligence computer programmers and programs that connect to integrated sensor architecture of millions of commercial and military sensors which process and send real-time analysis and imagery directly to the military and government agencies. AI is used 
every and excuse me everywhere from city overhead street cameras to uh, in the road seismic sensors and tens of thousands of military sensors fielded such as shortwave infrared imaging. The information generated by the sensors are deployed everywhere. Micro swarmed unmanned aerial vehicles, drones that had already been deployed in combination with their uh, let's see with their compact. I'm sorry, I think she's trying to say with their compacts had swept the landscape for enemy and friendly sensors. Sensors while lidar. Imagery systems first publicly seen at Waco sweep the landscape for enemy and friendly sensors. Then they go in, and she goes on to the sky is full of satellites spying on each other. I mean, I, it goes on and on and on. The the bottom line in this article is is really pertinent. It's powerful, and it should pressure pressure people that that are on the fence to get off the fence. Because, again, when you see where we're at, mankind is fabricating a virtual world. God created a true world. And that's where there's a difference. A virtual is man-made, and and reality is God-made. Now, I understand that you can transcend reality by drugs and other, you know, ways. But in most cases, the entire intelligence apparatus is concerned with one thing, and that is taking control of humanity's ability to think, to reason, and by controlling our ability to think and reason, they prevent most people from acting. I'll give you a good example. What's the use? Now, I don't know if any of you have ever been down enough to make that statement. I have. What's the use, Lord? They will not hear. What do you think, Doug? Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified when we post new videos.